They're big, they're vicious, and they're out for blood. Or are they? Today on Species Spotlight, we're going to take a look at the myths and tall tales about the red-bellied piranha and find out the truth behind the terror. <laughs> Hello all, welcome back to Zoological Point. My name is Kyle, and today we're going to take a look at the red-bellied piranha. Now, the red-bellied piranha is arguably the most recognizable fish of the Amazon basin, which, in case you weren't aware of, is the world's largest rainforest. Piranhas are specialized members of the tetra family. Bet you didn't realize that these two fish are actually very close cousins. The red belly, or often shortened to the red piranha, is one of the most iconic species there is, thanks to their beauty as well as their popularity in Hollywood, or whatever the South American equivalent to Hollywood is. Probably a Rio de Janeiro? Anyways, in 1978, Joe Dante released the film Piranha, which in all honesty is just a ripoff of Jaws except you replace the gluttonous great white with a genetically altered piranha and Amity Island with a stereotypical lake where teenagers attempt to lose their virginity but end up with a severe case of death, as in most horror movies. After all, teenagers are merely taller and less hairy bonobos. After this movie was released, and subsequently its multiple sequels, it caused the general public to be fascinated by these fish. However, their obsession was less out of wonder, but rather terror. But hey, fear sells. So Piranhas earned this title of a monstrous giant fish capable of turning the Amazon and its tributaries red with blood as if they were some kind of Old Testament tea plague. But was their portrayal in the media the fanged fact, or merely a load of fishy fiction? Well, let's break down their biology. Red bellies can grow up to 20 inches long, however, most individuals rarely surpass the 14 inch mark. When compared to their rainforest roommates like the giant arapaima, the silver arowana, and even their cousin the blackfin paku, they're nowhere near the mega monsters that the movies have made them out to be. Well, what about their diet? Are they the ravenous monsters we think they are? Not quite. The public perception of piranhas and their diet is often attributed to this quote from an explorer that says, they are the most ferocious fish in the world. Even the most formidable fish, the sharks or the barracudas, usually attack things smaller than themselves. But the piranhas habitually attack things much larger than themselves. They will snap a finger off a hand incautiously trailed in the water. They mutilate swimmers. In every river town in Paraguay, there are men who have been thus mutilated. First of all, no. Second of all, who wrote that? Some mythology intern who's never seen a barracuda outside of an aquarium? Wait. What? Roosevelt? The Theodore Roosevelt? Mr. Bull Moose himself? Excuse me, because I'm taking a bit back at that because he's one of my personal favorite historical figures, even if he knew almost nothing about the biology of carnivorous fish. Despite their saw trap like teeth, piranhas aren't fully predatory. Rather, they're omnivorous. And not just that, since they are quite lazy for a fish, they specialize in scavenging. When they do hunt, their prey of choice usually consists of fish and small aquatic invertebrates, such as worms, insects, and crustaceans. But when a shoal of piranhas is large enough, they can prey on animals as large as a capybara. I should note that this is an uncommon occurrence and is often always the result of the capybara being already injured or weakened. Piranhas are clearly a bit ferocious at times, but they are without doubt a far cry from the most vicious fish on the planet. Personally, I nominate the lamprey. Ew. I'm sorry if I came off as a bit aggressive, Mr. Roosevelt, but how about you stick to teddy bears and I'll stick to biology? I don't know why I'm talking to a guy who's been dead for over a century, but anyway, back to fish. Similar to the sharks of saltwater, piranhas are equipped with specialized nasal pits that allow them to easily detect the presence of blood in water. However, unlike those cartilaginous carnivores, piranhas aren't lucky enough to have layers upon layers of teeth. Once a piranha loses a tooth, it cannot get it back. Then it's just a fish in need of some dentures. Fun fact, the teeth of the piranha are not just an example of Mother Nature's weird obsession with equipping animals with various forms of military-grade weaponry, but are also their namesake. In the Tupi language, which originates from Brazil's native people, piranha directly translates to toothfish. Tupi is actually a rather fascinating language. In fact, why don't we take a little bit to learn about some of the words that we got from Tupi? There are quite a few animal names that come from the Tupi language, 
that we use in English. Here are just a few examples. Tapir, agouti, cougar, jaguar, and subsequently jaguarundi, toucan, macaw, capybara, and tegu. This has been... Before we wrap up today's episode, let's answer a burning question I'm sure all of you have. Do piranhas eat humans? Well, piranha attacks are rare, but not unheard of. If you've seen the show River Monsters, you'll know that when an attack does occur, it usually targets the hands or feet. Just to clarify, in the episode where Jeremy Wade is in Papua New Guinea looking for the fish that's been biting off people's genitals, it's not a red-bellied piranha, it's a red-bellied paku. A close cousin, but paku are almost completely herbivorous and have teeth that are more designed for crushing hard-shelled nuts and fruits which would make getting your reproductive organs munched on by a species that has essentially evolved to become a sentient swimming nutcracker probably more painful than the piranha. Anyways, to answer your questions, piranhas have been responsible for a handful of human deaths, but I'm not entirely sure if they do eat human flesh. Believe it or not, they have a higher kill count than sharks do. But if it's saying consolation, they're usually a laid-back species and some people can even go swimming with them. Just make sure you don't have any cuts or open wounds before you hit the swimming pool. 